We're back here at NRA headquarters at the National Farms Museum. John Pop here with Phil Schreier on a special holiday edition of the Curator's Corner. Phil, um, that's a petite firearm you have there, but uh, looks kind of like a classic. What is it? Well, it might be little, but it's got a big bark to it. Uh -oh. It's a, a 38 caliber Banker Special uh, made by Colt. Uh, the Banker Special was uh, a unique little, uh, little gun that was just a hair smaller than the Detective Special, which was quite popular from the late 1920s all the way through the 1970s. Uh, the Banker Special uh, came in two calibers, 22 and, and 38 Smith & Wesson which is different than a 38 Special, uh, and square butt and round butt. Uh, this is an early pre-1934 square butt version. Right. Um, what makes this particular gun interesting, and we've talked about Banker Specials before on the show, is that it has a, a special number stamped into the, uh, into the butt here. Oh. And uh, that is an inventory number uh, for the uh, railway mail service of the post office. And that, those initials would normally be marked right here on the back strap, R-M-S-P-O, uh, would be on the back strap. You can see they're not here. No. Oh. They're gone. They're gone. Uh, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Why is that, Phil? You're killing me. Tell me. Oh, well. All right. So, <laughs> Railway Mail Service, U.S. Post Office, law enforcement, two guys on every uh, train carrying mail armed with these 38s. And uh, they, they kept these guns their, their entire career. And they were issued from the 1930s all the way until the 1970s, if you believe it or not. Wow. The guns, they stopped making you know, around World War II, but after that, you know, they still kept these guns in service. Well, uh, a lot of employees lost their guns. Oh, I see, yes. And then just a note was made in the file, you know, that their gun was lost. Then they were told uh, during the last turn-in, which was 1977, that if uh, they had lost their gun and it was later to show up, they might face severe criminal penalties. Oh, I see. So a lot of them, this RMSPO designation on the backstrap disappeared as if that would help liberate the gunner, emancipate it from its <laughs> post office ownership. But the uh, old serial number stays on the, uh, on the butt here, and that's how we identified this as a, uh, as a railway post office gun. <laughs> They're clever enough to do that. To, they weren't clever enough to get rid of that other number. Right. You, you'll see that a lot of, of military guns... Uh, you know, the U.S. property mark has been, yes. you know, but. Uh, <laughs> so, question for you about that. It, very short barrel in there. Uh, obviously, will we'll, we'll affect, we all know that, the, the accuracy, but I'm so sure it's made for short range. But looking at it, it made me think of this question. How short can you go on a barrel? I mean, you can't get much shorter of a barrel than that, right? Oh, uh, well, actually, recently I've seen uh, a, bar a gun that was actually just a cylinder. You know, and the cylinder was held tight to a frame, and there was no barrel. You know, the barrel was the cylinder itself. Pepper boxes are like that. Okay. You know, there's no real barrel. The barrel is the, the chamber in, you know, and the cylinder. Uh, two inch, this is meant for close quarters. Right, yeah. Well, you're in a railway car or, a, yeah. yeah. And, and the other question I have for you, what was the difference in functionality between the, the square butt and, and the rounded butt? Well, why was it different? Just what, comfort, ergonomics. Right, so it's, uh, the square is just a little bit longer in the uh, in the hand grip than the than the uh, round butt. Very cool. Another great piece. You always I feel you got there's such great stuff. It, it it's I won't call it one off. It just gives it so much more. It's a great firearm to begin with. The whole cachet of the banker's press. Then you have the the serial number and, and that stuff. It's it's just great stuff that, that that makes everything in in these museums are just a a unique piece here, and they all tell a great story. So how can we come and see something like that? Well, John, uh, we come and see this and 3,300 other guns pretty close to it here at the National Firearms Museum. But what I want to ask you is, uh, this is our third week of this new series, the yes. current holiday series. Have you picked up on the common thread yet? I have. Did and, you? And that, that is? That would be Colt. 
No, well, that that you're, you're right, but that's not going to oh, stay that a, way. Oh, yeah. Right. But there's a common common theme oh. that's going to go through all six. Oh, you're killing me now. Halfway I thought I through. Had it. I got to keep thinking. Yeah, all right, oh. we'll come back next week. Oh, all right. But until then, you come by the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia, seven days a week, free admission, free parking. Um, we're at the intersection of Interstate 66 and US 50, or visit the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at Bass Pro Headquarters in Springfield, Missouri. Again, seven days a week, free parking, free admission. Or if you can't visit us on the inter off the interstate, visit us on the internet seven days a week at nramuseums.com. Awesome. Now I'm gonna do my homework. I'm gonna be thinking about this all week. Hopefully I'll have an answer next week. We'll see. If not, be here for the next edition next Monday of Curator's Corner, because it's killing me now. I gotta figure it out. Thanks, Bill. You're welcome, John. Thank you.